Hello and welcome to Code with Joe. In this tutorial, we're going to explore the Binance API. So for all the, that don't know what Binance is, Binance is the largest cryptocurrency exchange. I always call it the Disneyland for cryptocurrency because you can really do a lot here in this exchange and it, it, and it keeps growing. Uh, for example, you know, it makes it really easy to buy cryptocurrency on Binance with your uh, bank through bank deposit or you can buy it with credit card, debit card. There's P2P trading. They also got here some the, the regular exchange where you can uh, trade cryptocurrencies. They got their academy. Uh, if you're new to cryptocurrency, definitely check out the academy. It's for free and they got some other stuff. Uh, they're also working on their, or it is basically already running their own decentralized exchange, uh, which will be definitely, you know, a really good thing in the future. And they also have the trust wallet, which is uh, for mobile. So for your uh, mobile phone, you can use trust wallet. And they also got uh, their own Binance chain wallet. And I will make a tutorial to this uh, at a later time because this is too much for the API tutorial because we want to just focus on the API and there's so much to talk about here on, fin on Binance. Uh, yeah, so definitely check it out yourself. There is a link in the description. If you use my link, you get actually, I think $10 off or something or $10 for free, something like that. Let me know if you use my link, what do you get, how much you get. And once you signed up for Binance, then you can click up here where the little person icon is and go to API management. And here you can create your API keys. Just uh, give it a name. I don't know, whatever name you want, I call it YouTube. And then you can click create API. For this tutorial, uh, make sure you have a uh, reading enabled and spot the margin trading enabled and we don't need the other ones for this tutorial. And then just copy your API key and the secret key. And then we can actually get started with coding. So in here, I have my project folder. I called it Binance. And I have two files in here. This is the main Python file that we write our code in. I called it bin.py. Be sure to not call your files binance.py because this happened to me. That's why you see here some uh, names like bin and uh, binan because first I called my file uh, binance.py and I kept getting errors. So do not call your uh, Python files binance.py. And in our main file, I have here uh, just this line of code. We import our client and we got the client. This is where we paste in our API key and the API security key. And for this tutorial, I forgot to mention, we're going to use the official Python package. So let me go here back to the browser. We're going to use uh, the python.binance library for Python. So we need to install this. We can install it simply by, I'm just going to copy this with pip install python.binance. So I assume you have Python.3.6 or later installed. Then you can just run uh, pip install python.binance. Now I didn't want to run it because I already have it installed. And this is how you can ex uh, install the Python package. There is also, Binance has also their own REST API, but this is the documentation for the REST API, but we're going to stick for this tutorial with their uh, Python package. So once we have everything this four once well, you have copied these four lines of code so import config for everybody that doesn't know i have here my uh, credentials in a separate file in a config.py file and i have if you want to write a script and you don't want to see somebody your uh, keys you can do it like this so i'm just like in here so i have here a variable i think it's called api key and then inside of a string, I have here my API key like this. And I have also a secret API, what is it? API security uh, variable. And I have my security key here like this. 
and then I just import these two lines of code with the import, dot co uh, import config and then I use them here with config.api key and config.api security. But if you have your uh, keys like this in the same file, you can just do just uh, reference your variable name in here. But if you want to have it uh, separate, then you can do it the way I do it. Okay, so let me delete everything here. And once this is done, we can check if our connection works. We can run our file. In my case, it's python bin.py and I get the uh, line here logged in. So everything works on my end. I can start fetching information here from the API on Binance. Oh, sorry, you didn't even see this now. Yeah, so what I had here saying was these four lines of code. Sorry, I didn't see that I have the browser up, but it I only have here these four lines of code. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to do it again. Sorry about this. So I have here my two variables like this for API key. And inside a string, I got here my API key and the same I did for API security. Uh, why doesn't it go? API security and I did here the same like this and then I imported my config file and a reference to API key and API security like this. But you can just paste it here in plain a string as well if you want to or just paste the string and the variable with the string in here in the main file and then just paste in the variable name. You can do this as well. But I'm sure you guys know how to do this. And so let's not waste any more time here. So now we can fetch some information and we can start here. The first thing that I'm going to do is we can get here some simple information uh, like this. Client dot get symbol info here. We get all the information to the symbol that we pass in here. And then we can uh, print out the info the info like this and we get back a JSON response here for our symbol and we can also loop through this through the information here like this we can say for uh, uh, for i in info we print print oh is my computer stuck no print i and here we can see all the uh, functions that we have available when we want to get some uh, information about the symbol so the, for the trading pair and we can see what what's available here if we can margin trade this trading pair etc okay then we can go here to exchange info we can get here all the information from the exchange i'm going to replace this line of code here with client.getExchange underscore info and let's run this and this gives us here the functions where we have available when we want to get some exchange information uh, we got the time zone server time rate limits exchange filters uh, if you do not know how to access them we can access for example here uh, what we're going to access uh, time zone we can say here uh, time set is info and we pass in here the time zone and then print times
and then we see our time zone we got UTC we can also do it for server time and we can fetch the server time okay then we get back our epoch time here for our server time um, we can also fetch our account information for this all we need to do is we change again this line up here to client dot get a underscore account and then mm, let's just print first of all to see what we get So we get here a JSON response. So it sees, looks like we get here a lot of trading pairs. This uh, most likely is our wallet on Binance. And so there is a lot of token here on Binance. I don't know how many trading pairs they have. So I delete this here. Uh, we can loop through this. We do it here with for i in info and then print i not if print it is print and here we get some information uh to our wallet the balances we got here make a commission take a commission buy a commission seller can trade can withdraw so this is gives us the information here um in our wallet so let me show this to you so we go here to fiat and spot wallet in our account and then we can we see here the list of currencies that they have in our wallet so the currencies that we can deposit we can hide the small balances in here and I wanted to show you the uh, so make a buyer what was the one that I want to show you can withdraw can deposit so when we go back here we have here the actions for example can trade so if we can trade the token if we can uh, what is the other one can we, if we can withdraw it and this is the information that we can get, uh, get back here so we get here most likely our bullions back true or false let me see if I can just run this so I have to specify a trading pair I most likely have to yeah but you can see what you get here from the um, from the account information what's inside of your account and there are some permissions let me actually print out what the permissions are As the perm and info and permissions permissions and then we can print the permissions perm and see what we get back okay spot permissions so the permissions are for spot trading okay uh, what we, uh, what's also interesting is the balances so we want to fetch the balances we want to see what we have available on our wallet we can do it like this and here we get back a JSON string with all the balances and as I, you can see here on my wallet I have a lot of balances with nothing and we can loop through all these balances here oh sorry again that mistake here we didn't see what I'm coding here but uh, I just created here a variable let me call this actually balance because you want to fetch the balances and let me change this to bell and we don't need this one right here I can comment this one out let me run this again here we get back all of the balances so yeah my balances are most likely most 
most of them are zero and we can actually loop through them so for this we can say here i'm going to create a for loop for b in bell and then print b So we can see here our S set that we have available and the balance set we have free and locked. So this is uh, free is the available balance and locked is if it's locked up somewhere, maybe, I don't know, in a margin trader or somewhere. I don't know exactly what the locked means, but the free is the available balance and we can first look through. Actually, you know what I want to do here? I want to print out only the balance where I have where I have actually a balance so I don't want to print out all the zeros and for this I can say here um, I create here a variable for this for B in Bell so I have to create up here no, I don't have to create anything. I can just add here a line of code. Uh, if statement, I'm going to do it like this. So for B and Bell, so we're going to loop here through our balances and we say uh, for, so if, when we want to access the free ones, right? We want to access if b free is larger than zero we want to print b right we want to print b if b is larger than zero we want to print b but we have to turn this into a uh, float And so let me see if this works. Okay, perfect. So we get back only the balances where I have actually a balance. And we can see here Bitcoin, I got balance here, Bitcoin, Binance and so on. So this is how we can uh, loop through the balance. So to the available balances that we have free, uh, free balances. And we can, can, could do the same here if I say locked, we can print out the locked balance that's larger than zero. Uh, it, I'm not probably get no output because I don't think I have anything locked. Yeah, I don't get any output because I don't have any larger locked balances than zero. But with free, if we set this back to free, we can actually get the balances where we have larger balances than zero okay and yeah if we know that we have some balance and actually we can go and do a trade and this is actually really simple i'm going to copy this line of code here and we can comment everything out here because we don't need this anymore and we can set here a trade so we can create a trade like this okay now i have to do it manually oh sorry about that screwed up here my tab so this one we don't need the quantity for this oh, we don't need the price so we have here options when we want to trade here uh, so for example we don't need the price when we trade this because we want to execute uh, this trading pair with the market price so for example we said here our symbol to BNB bit, uh, BTC because I've seen that I had a small balance here of Binance token and what we're going to do is 
we make a side buy so we buy actually binance token with bitcoin and we want to execute it right away so there's some filters order type market is one of them you because you have also order type limit and with limit then you have to set other filters for example the price at what uh when you want to have it executed and so on and also time in we have to set time in force and this is uh good until cancelled so it stays forever until your order is cancelled but i'm going to set this back here to market because i want to execute uh, the trade right away so i'm going to show you my account here and let's go back to exchange and let me find bnb bitcoin here goes the first one and you can see here my balance that i have no you can't so let me move the terminal So I moved the terminal up here because uh, important is only the price. So here you can see my little dust balance. So I got about uh, 0 0.1 BNB and I got uh, some dust in Bitcoin. And I want to buy some uh, Binance token with this with my dust here. And I set the quantity to 0 0.1 by, uh, BNB token. Let's see if I can actually afford this. And when I run it, then just uh, pay attention to the. And I get, okay, I get an unexpected indent. So let's try it again. And perfectly. So if you paid attention, uh, before my balance was 0 0.12, now I bought 0 0.1 BNB token and my balance is now 0 0.22. And I can do the same. Let me go back to my code here and move this. And I can also do this the same. I can sell it. I can set this if we want to sell it, then I have to set sell uh, side is side sell and then i can sell back at mark at the current market uh, rate my bnb again so let's them let me demonstrate this again here so i got currently 0 0.22 bnb when i run this script and everything works i should end up with 0 0.12 bnb okay perfect this is how we can execute trades here on, on Binance. As you can see, this is really simple. Uh, you have to just make sure that you use the correct filters. Uh, there's the links in the, are in the description for the documentation. Uh, be sure to check them out because there's a, they have many options on this exchange. So yeah, it's definitely worth to, you know, read through them. But basically this is how you can uh, just create your own trading so this is how you can execute trades and now you can just use this logic here this line of code here or this well if you can split it up into one line of code you can actually run your you know you can start implementing strategies for your trading bots i may want i may uh, upload some trading bots on my channel in the future but to be honest i'm really bad at trading so i'm just I'm just buying and holding holding and yeah but I like the fact of trading there's a lot of money to be made with margin trading but it's really dangerous and yeah so I don't know I just trade for fun a little bit but not too much so yeah don't expect too many uh, strategies or tutorials on how to build successful trading bots but if you have built one uh, let me know share it with me or whatever you know but other than that yeah guys this is it i don't know if there's anything else i can show you 
yeah we can actually after we executed a trade we can actually here print the trades i'm going to show you this why not so let me go back here to my code and we can so i have to comment this out because i don't want to execute another trade and we can fetch here the trading information so we get can get the last trades here with client get my underscore my underscore trades and here we pass in the trading pair that we want the information from and this was bnb btc BNB BTC and let's print out the trades and I think it prints out the last 10 recent trades so let's find out here and perfect so here we get the last trades so we get the adjacent string here our JSON object back and these are the last trades let me actually loop through them and for T in trades print because I'm curious myself what I'm getting back here what a response and perfectly it is uh, uh, nicely formatted these are the last 10 trades I think it should be the last 10 trades but it looks like it's way more than 10 trades but these are definitely my the latest BNB Bitcoin trades that are made so this one seems to be my oldest one and these were the, the last trades that oh here are the ones so this one was the oldest one and this one are the last last trades here we have here the 0 0.1 trades the quantity of 0 0.1 BNB so these were the last trades that we executed here with the script yeah this is how it works here it's really straightforward to uh, navigate through the Binance API I hope that you guys learned something that I can help you with my tutorials be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like my tutorials and let me know in the comments if you want to see some other tutorials Okay guys, thank you for watching and I hope I see you guys in the next one. Bye.